Once upon a time, in a deep and ancient forest, there lived a pair of crafty goblins. The crafty goblins did everything together, until one day, when darkness overwhelmed the big wooden house in which they lived. Blamed for the darkness, Brother Goblin was forced to leave the forest, while his sister had to stay behind. Ten years later, they were finally reunited, and together, they decided to confront the darkness in the big wooden house. Though they sought the help of their friends in the forest, they found that no one wanted to delve into the long gone past. This is how the goblins found themselves alone in the woods, trying to discover why darkness had submerged the big wooden house. We should play Compass and North Star in the woods. Be sure to wear your hat then. <laughs> you be sure to wear your hat. <laughs> All right, who wants ice cream? Me! Eat up. Without a word, she went out and buried the tiara in the ground beneath the sapling. And as the final scoop of dirt fell, the tiara felt truly gone. And with it, the final link to her old self. She could only go forward and find a new place for herself in this world, where she was no longer truly a princess in a tiara and a beautiful gown, but a wan woman alone in a deep and ancient wood. And that was how the princess lost her most precious treasure. And her title. I don't like that story. There were no goblins, and it was depressing. We won't read it again. I love you, Mom. Not me. <laughs> Just kidding. <gasps> love you, Mom. I love you, too. Sleep well and dream, my doves. What a waste. I killed mom. I killed 
killed her. doing all right? I thought coming here would be closing a chapter of our lives, you know? And instead we've spun off a whole miserable prequel trilogy. Okay. No. We're not letting ourselves do this again. Come on. Up. My numbing labor's a great way to forget your troubles. Uh, can't we just have coffee instead? No. On your feet, soldier. Let's take a break from packing and sort out the furniture. Mm. If we get enough done, I'll drive you into town and buy you a gallon of ice cream. Mint chocolate chip, two gallons. Let's do this. Goblin face is keep, dollar sign is donate or sell, and trash can is, well, trash. By the way, I cleared out most of the stuff from the bathroom this morning, but I left you the toilet. How very generous of you. Ancient appliances, you are staying here. Although, that oven looks in okay enough shape. No way. We are not moving the oven.
You're doing a great job. Uh, thanks. Hmm. Crummy table and wobbly chairs. A nice tablecloth could hide the stains. A tablecloth? Ooh, fancy lady. Oh. Oh, God. That's... What's that smell? like delicious garbage. Ooh, yes, delicious indeed. <laughs> or could it be Stinky Pants Sam? <laughs> oh, Stinky Pants Sam! <laughs> Come on now. Sam got that smell getting a skunk out of our barn. Be nice. <gasps> a skunk? What did you do to her? Is she okay? <laughs> sure is. She just went hunting for food and couldn't get back out. All she needed was a little nudge to get her on her way. Sam Kansky, hero of skunk kind. I remember being super impressed by him, and it made me want to be a wild animal superhero too. Allison, I asked you to clean up the coffee table three times already. <sighs> Oops, I forgot. All right, I'll clean it up. Thanks. While you do that, I'll check out the furniture. I'm guessing you want to keep the coffee table? If there's anything you want, speak now. I'm not really planning on bringing furniture to Denali. And if I need a base in Juno, you'll have all the furniture I need. How very non-committal of you. All right, I'll keep it. Are you gonna keep doing that? I really like that armchair. It'll look sharp next to your tree stump nightstand. I'll be the most stylish mountain man ever. But I was actually thinking it should go in your library. Library? We may not even have a living room. <laughs> I have faith in you. Maybe it'll be salvageable with a deep clean? And finally, I hate to say it, but the couches get a one-way ticket to the dump. No protest here. I think I have permanent knee damage from a decade of bumping into the corner of those damn things. Well, then that's it for the living room. You are relieved from your duties. Ugh, gross stain is gross. Ugh, what happened? Some unfortunate spillage that brought about the end of indoor tea parties. I hid the stain with my toys, forgetting that they would eventually be picked up. Brilliant move, Ronan. I was so afraid that Marianne would ground me for the rest of my life. But she didn't, right? No. I remember her saying that, that sufficiently adventurous play ensures that accidents will happen, and that it wasn't a big deal. But still, no more tea parties inside. What to do with this? Tables are expensive. And besides, this one's an Allison and Tyler original. What's this doing down here? Is that gum? Ugh. I guess that was probably me. <sighs> What's up? Should I throw these pictures out? I mean, most of them are pretty happy memories. I guess. You look cute here. That's not me. I mean, it is, but...
but not really. I get it. It's just weird seeing myself like that again. Damn. Didn't think a picture could throw me like this anymore. Has therapy helped at all? Oh, yeah, definitely. My therapist really heard me when I said I was a guy. And she helped me get ready for the reactions I'd get, you know? It's dealing with other people that's been way harder than figuring myself out. At the end of the day, being able to look in the mirror and see Tyler, that's made the biggest difference. Which is why I'm scheduling my top surgery as soon as we sell this house. No more putting a binder on every morning. God, that sounds fucking amazing. Yeah, totally. And just so you know, I'll be there to help out when you do. Whatever you need. <laughs> Thanks. All right, what's your verdict, Ronan? You know what? I'll keep a few to remind us how far we've come. Oh man, I love this one. <laughs> Why do I look so pissed? I remember loving this. Maybe because Marianne was sticking a camera in your face? Like Allison. Now hold up your fish. It's not my fish anymore. Allison stole it. <gasps> my sister, the fish thief. <laughs> you were just being bratty. Was I though? Yes. All I did was help clean it when we were out on the porch. Eddie had to force you to share. not gonna jump up and do the cha-cha. What about me? I wanna clean the fish too. It's not even your fish. You didn't catch anything. Ugh, only because you wouldn't stop talking and scared all the fish away. Keep your eyes on what you're doing. Allison, when we're done with this half, you can take over and do the other one. That sound fair? Yes. Mm -mm. You're right, I was kind of being proud. Hey, Allison, come take a break with me. Starting the fire again? Yeah, I'm gonna boil some water. You want something to drink? Would you rather have instant coffee or instant coffee? Hmm, nah, sorry. I'm more of a tea person. Get it? Tea? As in... Mm-hmm. How long have you been waiting to make that joke? Longer than I'm willing to admit. <laughs> I am so glad Eddie came through on the caffeine. Shh, did you hear that? <gasps> the Ice King is sending us a warning. For your punishment, said the Ice King, you shall be banished from the forest. And if you dare come back before the new moon, you shall feel my anger in your gut. Hear it in the wind! Whoosh! <laughs> huh. Do you think the Ice King would really react that way? He may be intimidating, but he's always fair and never mean. Oh, yeah. Y you're right. Maybe he tells the goblins to help the people they hurt instead? Great idea, sweetie. Why don't we think about it at dinner? I'll put everything away for safekeeping while you go wash your hands. Can you put them in the binder so they don't get stained? Of course, love. I think my dark and twisty version was better. We put so many hours into that book. Yeah. Our binder was full of extra drawings and incomplete stories. I think they're all still in the kitchen drawer. We should go take a look. Come check this out. Allison's first drafts. Right. Because I didn't contribute at all. Come on. I know you did. I can't believe she kept all these. 
You'd think putting them on the fridge for a couple of weeks would have been enough. You know how we thought of ourselves as the goblins? Did you ever get the sense that maybe Mary Ann was the princess in the stories? Uh, yeah. She called her bedroom the princess's sanctum, and she was all alone in the woods, in this house, until we showed up. She was. Alone, but with a few friends who helped her along the way. What are you doing? Research. So, if Mary Ann was the princess, then who were all the rest? And here we go. Oh, come on. Humor me. didn't do him justice. Hmm. Justice? Kind of ironic, huh? Considering he was the lawful good one? Too bad the law isn't really just. You go here. Hmm. Pelican. She was the most generous one. <laughs> yeah. But there was always a catch. Bear was the most helpful one. He was always around. Stalking her? What? No. I mean, he was kinda always there, lurking. You done? All right, I think I'm done. You sure? How do you like them apples? You know, I think you might be onto something. What about these guys? I don't see them being real life people. Or this one. Yep. Totally Marianne. Why a princess, though? Why not a queen? She hated authority. Yeah. She'd have been a terrible ruler. The specific human attributes you have assigned to these forest animals are truly thought-provoking. Indubitably. I forgot about that. We'd been pretending he was there. And then, suddenly he was. That was the only time that happened, right? Allison. Wait. It felt way too real. It was- Us. Pushing our imagination way too far. Uh, Great. Hello? Sam Kansky, Grandmaster of Bad Timing. We're not done with this conversation. Morning, Sam. Well, hi, goblins. I ran into Chief Brown, who said you were starting to clean up on the house this morning, so, uh... I kind of figured you might need some supplies. That's... Thank you. That was very thoughtful. Oh, uh, also got something for you, Tyler. Every man needs a good knife. There you are. Thanks, Sam. Good. Good, yeah. Oh, and before I forget, for the lady of the house. It was your mom's favorite recipe. 
still make it darn near every week. Think of her every time. Uh, thanks. But we don't have a stove. Still no electricity. Oh, yeah. Fuse box is busted. <laughs> Just another thing I've been meaning to put back together around here. Where is it? I can take care of it. Oh, I don't doubt you can. But, uh, I've been kicking this thing back to life for the last 20-some years. I'll give you a hand. All right. Box is in the barn. Follow me. We'll be right behind you. Well, I guess old bears can learn new tricks. <laughs> yep. Come on. Let's go get our electricity back on. So, um, how's school? I graduated already. Outdoor studies. Oh, outdoor studies, huh? Well, oh, it's a good thing I came along when I did. You know, I built this here barn for your mama. You really helped her out, huh? No, oh, you know, just a few chores here and there. I was, I was glad to help your mother. She... I can never bring myself to leave her high and dry. Anyways, let me find that darn key. Wait. Wait, Sam. You have more of our keys? Yeah. The one for the barn's called a railroad key. See, it's got this special tip that you can... Fascinating. I'll take that off your hands now. Well, I, uh... Figured I might still need to do some maintenance, so, uh... Nope. We're good. Thank you. Uh, fair warning. Door's a bit temperamental. <clears throat> Haven't you been taking care of this place? <sighs> you didn't oil the doors? What? You think I just hang out here all day or something? Here, son. Give me a try. Good. Here, when you twist it as far as you can to the left, give it a nice little... <clears throat> No oh, shit. Well, at least the door is open now. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's easy to fix. Now, that fuse box. Oh no, no, no. You and you are going to clean up your mess. I'll take care of the fuse box. But I didn't... All right, fuses go into plugs. Should be easy. Let's try this one. All right, let's take a look. Salt and lime. It's a door latch, not a bottle of cheap tequila. <laughs> mm. Sure could go for a margarita right about now. A margarita? Really? Hey, sometimes old... Hmm? Seems good. Everything okay? You, uh, you two look like you got this all in hand, so, um. What are we gonna do with this wreck? 
take it apart and sell the scrap. Be my guest, but it sure looks like a pile of junk to me. Where you see junk, I see dollars. Preda rep. What's that? Wolf pee. Ew, what? Do not spill it on your shoes. I sense a story. Well, if by story you mean using it at fireweed to get rid of some rats, and then spilling it on my only pair of shoes, then yes. <laughs> hey, it was not funny. Sure thing, B-boy. Hey there, little buddy. <laughs> Are you cooing at a spider? It had better be a tiny one. Don't listen to the mean lady. You're an eight-legged beauty. Huh, look at this. I think this is where she made all her toilet paper tubes, rope, cardboard. I wonder how long she planned to make that. Maybe a car? Ooh, or a tank. She was so crafty. And she could draw and write and take pictures. She could have been an artist instead of just locking herself up out here. Oh man, I'm gonna put together the sweetest toolbox ever. Found Marianne's stash. Blueberry, blueberry. Does canned food really expire? I mean, it's airtight, right? Uh, not gonna be the one to test that out. Those have definitely gone bad. As far as I'm concerned, they always were. Allison, do you know who this is? What did you find? Do you know who that is? Uh, yeah. That's Carol, Eddie's mom. I've seen other pictures of her, but never this one. Man, look at Brown. And Marianne. She looks really happy. Can I? Careful, the glass is Ow! broken. Are you okay? It stings. Let's go see Mom. But she'll get mad. You weren't even supposed to be here. She said not to disturb her and Eddie. Where are you going? Things were different when she was around. We were family, Eddie. How could you do this to me? Shh. Look. I had to make that call. What were they talking about? I can't figure out what's going on. I don't know, but... I remember that whatever Eddie had to do, whatever that call was about, it was tearing him up. Tearing him up? <laughs> he was being a total cop, and Marianne got pissed and threw him out. Here, I'm gonna show you what I remember. There's more, I can feel it. I had to make that call. I was just following the law. Oh yeah? And this little visit right here? What would the law say about this, huh? Look, I didn't have to come out here, but I did. You're a goddamn hypocrite. Get out of here! Marianne. <sighs> I said get out! Out! What? She didn't throw the picture at him. You sure about that? He was being a complete dick. How can you be sure? We were eavesdropping. We could barely see a thing. What do you think happened then? Look. I had to make that call. I was following procedure. What I'm legally required to do. Then why are you here? Pretty sure this isn't procedure. I wanted you to hear it from me. Please leave. Mary Ann, I'm sorry. Please just go. I 
How do we keep remembering the same thing so differently? It was a long time ago, and, well, memory's a tricky thing. Wait, when did that happen? I, I'm not sure. I think it was the exact same day she attacked you. That's what I thought. But Uncle Eddie said he hadn't seen Marianne for weeks. Yeah, that was bullshit. And what was all that about following the law? What was he doing here exactly? I don't know. I have no idea. We shouldn't jump to any conclusions. Look, I know he took care of you. But that doesn't make him incapable of lying. I can't see him being that cold with Marianne. Even if he was being a cop. I mean, I can, but who knows? I guess memory's a tricky thing, huh? You're a goddamn hypocrite. Get out of here! You're a goddamn hypocrite. Get out of here! Get off my property right now! So, we agree. Brown came out here and bullied Marianne the same day she attacked us. And then lied about it. Now what? We go and get a straight answer from him. Right now? Yes. I'll go get my car keys. But what will these mountains of trash do without us? Fuck the trash. <laughs>